What a glorious thing to be A healthy grown-up busy busy bee Filing away the passing hours First operation on the chuck body then is to face off one end of this piece of stock. I'll then flip it round and uh, face it off to length, followed by a through drill hole of 13 millimeters. That's my largest drill. Um, that will be finished off at one end, 14 millimeters, and on the first end, which will the opposite end of this bar as you see it at the moment if you follow my drift uh, will be bored to um, the minor diameter for the 24 mil by one um, thread that's the word right off we go <laughs> back at the lathes where uh, I faced the piece of bar stock off to length and drilled a through hole 13 millimeters and I've just uh, done a few preliminary uh, bores uh, using the boring bar here the largest one I have to a depth of uh, 50 millimeters or slightly under so that the end of the workpiece virtually touches the end of the tool holder to give me my depth. Uh, I'm sorry you missed the drilling of the hole, it was really thrilling and if you've never seen a hole drilled before uh, let me know in the comments and I'll do a short video on drilling a hole in a piece of metal. I'm sure you'll find it riveting. Anyway I'm just going to put another cut on here and we'll run this one through um, I'll only do it the once and then I'll bring you back when it's done Seventeen point seven, uh, seventeen point eight. I mean, 
So I'll adjust that. Uh, no, I won't. I'll leave that. Then I can do incremental one or two millimeter cuts, and that will bring us up to the 32.7 ish that I need. So I need um, one, two, another five mil part of that. So I'll get on with that while you go and make a cup of coffee or tea or whatever. Had your tea, jolly good. Back over at the uh, lathe of course and I've finished doing the boring bit. And uh, let's mic this up just to check that I've got it close to 22.7. And let me see, we're like twenty-two point seven five. Um yes of course I checked it before I did that, otherwise I wouldn't have let you see. But uh, no, that's uh, that's pretty good spot on. And uh let me see, I think I'll just relieve this end a little just to give the uh, threading tool a lead in and then uh, go back, change the change wheels over again and start to do the threading oh no, before I do that I've got to uh, do the relief in the end there by which I mean this portion the 40, that's 15 mil along the threaded portion and then this has got to be bored out to 26 mil diameter from there to the end of the bore so I'll do that first How am I going to do that, you ask? Simple, says I. Oh, oh. Wind that in. Thirty-five. Check that. Thirty-five. Now I'll wind this out. Set that to zero. Wind it out until it takes a cut and then feed it into the end again. and so on until I've got to the required 26 mil diameter depth next operation is the cutting of the internal threads I've already set up the change gears to give the uh, one millimeter pitch 
set the tool height uh, on or just below center height in fact and uh, about to make the first cut total depth theoretically of uh, 0.65 uh, however, I'm going to take uh, an initial cut running up to 0.5 each side and then uh, I'll try the thread and see uh, how we're going. So, if you're ready, so am I. I made the classic error there of uh, disengaging the uh, lead screw. Um, hopefully I've been able to pick it up okay, but I'm going to make a second cut now. Otherwise I'm going to have to start all over again, which is a bit of a pain in the what's it. But there we go, let's see what happens. I might have got away with it. No, not yet. carry on cutting and uh, save you watching an extended version I'll bring you back later when I've finished well almost amazingly that's uh, pretty close to finish it starts and I assure you it starts and then tightens up so Another run through, I think, at that last setting, and we'll see how that goes.
toot up in the spout. But oh, still a bit tight. <laughs> Not a spring pass, I think. to say that uh, that glass spring cut has done the trick. Well, the threads are pretty short, I'm just cutting my fingers, but there we go. Let's take that out, clean up. Get rid of the muck off the threads and I think that'll be just fine. Sign times. I may start on the uh, rings on the outside of the chuck body. And uh, let's alter the camera a little. You can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to form two rings on here which will be knurled to give a little bit of purchase when um, tightening up the chuck body and uh, I've got to get these uh, five mil apart uh, five mil wide I should say and it's not super critical, but uh, I'll have to get it as close as I can. There we go. Put the lubrication on there. One mil deep. That is uh Is just what the uh, picture calls for. Shouldn't call my picture really, should I? I? Should call my drawing. There we go. Because I've got the chuck butted up against the um, 
um, jaws of the chuck here I can't get right well I can get in there but I'd risk damaging the jaws of the six jaw so um, when I finish this I'll uh, swap it around and just finish off that last little bit in the corner there right next job knurling I tied it at the end and I put a chamfer on these in readiness for the uh, knurling procedure which is uh, what I'm going to do now I can't remember whether I've shown this knurling 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 no knurling tool but uh, <laughs> That's way too fast. Some lubrication on there. And clamp it down. Across. save a little bit of time I've chamfered the end I'm now about to bore out the end hole to 14 millimeters uh, I've marked it and it's 13.1 at the moment just uh, taking a scratch and I'm going to open it out by uh, 0.1,2,3,4,5 and we'll see how we get on with that Just double checking this on the diameter. Well, I can adjust it if it's not. Right.
So, and that's under. for me Tommy stop the mill over at the mill then uh, I've already set the chuck piece in the vise as you can see I've zeroed the uh, uh, DRO to the end here so that the spindle center line was over the end I've now moved it in uh, 10 millimeters and I'm going to do a small plunge cut cut and then move the uh, quill or rather the table um, out so that he uh, gradually takes a scallop out of each side oh well start with that then carry on with this one and then when I do this side I'll come back with the uh, video camera and uh, you'll be able to see more easily how it's being done first side is done and now I'll just show you how I start to uh, cut the recess out from this side um, unfortunately the I haven't got a long enough flute on the uh, end mill so after a certain distance uh, I have to do it in two passes and then clean it up at the end with a, a full depth cut but uh, needs must I suppose first of all I'll touch it off on the on the workpiece just touching 
set the x axis to the zero. that way so I'll go to 24 here so that I can do a final punch cut at 10. And so on. And I'll bring you back when I'm uh, coming up to the last cut or so. I have finished the cuts down to 6mm. Now I'm going to do a plunge cut at each end to take it out to the full length of the slot. And there we are. It will need tidying up with the needle file, but uh, that is just about it. You will be as relieved as I am to know that that's the majority of the machining finished. And uh, here we have the completed lantern chuck. All that remains is to machine up a number of sleeves to fit various uh, diameter uh, fasteners 
top hat section which pops in there with the, the, the bolt sticking through and uh, a rod to go in the shaft so that when you screw it up so about there it, the rod bears down on the head of the, the bolt or the fastener whichever is in there and uh, to save you the pain of watching me hacking great lumps off bits of metal I'll do those off camera and uh, do come back when I finish with them and you can see what I mean uh, so here we are then I've finished the other two pieces this portion goes into the shaft and um, I had to file a flat on it otherwise it would was hydraulicking and pushing itself out then there's a bush top hat section which in this case I've drilled 5mm and that goes in the chuck where you see what I'm doing it's a pretty tight fit there we go that's flush on there and the bolt or the fastener is inserted rather awkwardly If that thing is in the way in the chuck this is then screwed down a long way obviously it will accommodate various size heads and that holds the screw bolt fastener secure and knowing the distance from this face to there which um, let me measure it is seven point seven five you then adjust the cut on here to take that into account um, unfortunately I've got uh, insufficient material to make any more collars at the moment but obviously if I had I would make it so that it was a an even um, distance of uh, I don't know I suppose eight would be a sensible distance to make it to make it a round figure cutting the length of the uh, bolt and there you have it I'm sorry it's been such a long series um, but I'm sure if you're, my analytics are anything to go by I'm sure you've been fast forwarding through the most boring bits anyway Okay then, so that's the end of this episode and if you have been, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.